Hello, and welcome to a new episode about Elder Monsters Tower Defense Evolved! Let's go through some commander stuff right now. Alright, um, a lot of you guys have been asking how to spec a commander tree. Totally depends on what you want to do. Let's dive right into it. Um, these are my commanders at the moment. Goblin King being the lowest, because... Yeah, if you level him, you'll know. If you level him, you'll know. Save for Dragon Predator, I only level these to push to 11.5k and then I basically dropped them and then I went with Forest Father, Fairy Mother and Commander Bot. Um, let's go over Commander Bot first. He's probably the easiest one to level. So, uh, minigame points, peasant mobs, tanks, mods and necromancers. You just put him on your map and then um, use them and then swap him back out. It's super easy. What to invest in? All right. Um, so a lot of you guys might know that uh, on forest, for example, when you're leveling, um, butterfly doesn't reach all of the uh, basically all of the towers, which is okay. If you have, for example, forest water in here, then you do actually reach all of the uh, towers. But I mean, for me. At my point of the game, which is the end game, I guess you can call it. I don't need Pixie. I don't need Soul Mage. Their evolutions. Um, and at some point, Commandable takes over Forest Father, as in the experience per hour gain. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. Um, so yeah, as you can see, kill XP is very high with me. Just I've just been spending it all in there. Uh, I didn't even get research damage or tech damage or evil bonus or cards in deck. Um, neither spell duration. Why is that? I just dumped everything in kill XP. Like I got two point two extra points in here, so it's level three. But uh, I mean, same for research two and tech two. Tech two basically increases the kill XP and also the kill XP from your tech and your research. But if you go to research and you don't actually have kill XP here, then it's not worth getting. Same for tech. If you go to tech here, if you don't have a decent amount of kill XP here, um, it doesn't matter. Then you don't actually need it. So if you were to go for full XP mode, I would just go into kill XP. I would get spell cooldown maybe. Because spell cooldown is really nice for monster ship. Um, I mean, it's not even needed. You don't even need to get this whole tree here, like at all. Just dump everything into Kill XP. Um, on the right side, Mission Gems. I mean, that's a must-have. Tech Points is a must-have. Um, tank Gold, Mob Gold, doesn't matter. Tank Cooldown and Mob Cooldown. That's probably the first thing that you should go for. Um, yeah, Tank Cooldown, Mob Cooldown. Why? Because you'll level Command Bot faster. Let me just we get the here. Um, so yeah, uh, tank cooldown, mob cooldown, get those first, level commander bot faster, and then go for, for example, mission jams and tech points. You could have like five points in here, five points in here, five here and five here to make it more profitable at the start, which is probably the best way to do it. After that, um, I would maybe go for cards in deck. Because uh, buying cards is, is really nice, but only if you're actually going to buy cards. So I recently bought like a shitload of cards on my dragon. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have like 6.4 million cards right now, but I'm not going to invest into cards anymore. Like not at least for like a few months. So I actually rerolled, respect my commando bot. I uh, removed the Eva bonus research and tech one. I also removed cards um, and just went into full kill XP, which is really nice when you have like a lot of kill XP, just a flat kill XP. So yeah, that's how I would spec the uh, commander bot if you're just farming. If you're going for a prestige point uh, run, yeah, then you obviously need um, research two, tech two, but I would also get tech one and research one because it will increase the damage. Uh, you'll get more waves with Commando Bot and Goblin King to get uh, your prestige point run higher. 
you basically do a prestige point run to increase the prestige points you gain from your resource packs here. Um, then we'll move to Fairy Mother. Fairy Mother, oh, she's so good. So you have the infinite gold drop. Um, you basically have the resources and gold trees, and then you have like the experience tree. Uh, I personally went for the experience tree first, together with a bit of gold drop. Like I got a uh, bot gold tree here, which should stay at one because I mean it's useless. I get all of my gold from uh, the AD, and I can just level up to 700, and then just farm my waves. Um, so it's kind of useless. The resource power is really good, like and resource cooldown, uh, but resource power is really good because it uh, boosts your mastership to 1000% of one Um So yeah, that's a lot of extra experience. Let me just not waste any. There we go. Um, yeah, you can hear the mobs on the background like dying. So yeah, um, how I would spec the fairy mother. What you should go for is experience per wave. I know it's all at the bottom, but it's so worth it. It's so good. 55, save up to 55 points, get two levels in here, 22 and 33. It is so good, like for real. Like, get that first. I would maybe get uh, resource power to five after us together with kill XP five. Uh, get like kill XP times two here to five, this to five. Um, just to get most out of it. Um, the gold drop times 10 is really nice for dropping tanks because you'll get like an extra 10%. Uh, Evo gold is also really nice. Oh, I mean, look at look at my rave. Uh, yeah, I mean, three point. Uh, let me just pause it here. See, that's like a shitload of. Um, gold that you get there because you also use fairy mother for your uh, gold farming setups um, but yeah those I would definitely go for first so experience per wave then kill xp times 10 times 2 resource power and just a regular kill xp boss xp as well because mainly all of your experience comes from bosses so that's definitely something to invest in if you're into energy farming and all that kind of stuff um, I haven't really tried it, I haven't really farmed energy, uh, but yeah, I mean perk chance is always nice. Perk power is actually also pretty nice for experience, because if you have Goliath, it will basically boost him up, oh, too much, uh, boost him up to uh, 25% for each unique tag, which adds up as well, because you get like 8 tags, so it's uh, st still, blah, still pretty nice. But yeah, that's how I should, uh, how you should basically spec into Fairy Mother. Especially if you're going for XP. Experience per wave, and then uh, max this first, like, clearly, and then get 5 here, together with 5 here, 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 and there, and then just start filling it up. Um, gold per wave. Um, I'm still debating on this, if I should get it or not. Um, I guess it's nice, but, I mean, my towers are just so insane and give so much gold. It doesn't matter too much for a Cyclops farm. Um... But yeah, I mean, you just have to see that for yourself. Then the Forest Father, um, I don't actually use him anymore, uh, except for a slow gold farm. Uh, he's pretty easy to level, but yeah, I mean, look at this gold, it's really nice. Um, so, how I would do it? Combo, uh, combo power, mastery power, and aura power, those are probably the ones that you really want to go for. Um, be just because you can get a tree support setup ongoing. So with that, well, what that basically means is you can have tree supports and reach maximum attack speed on your energy farms, which is really good. They don't even need to be maximum level, um, so yeah, there's that. The range is also pretty nice if you're still like decently early game. Like I don't, I don't know if I should say this. Like it's early game is up to like 6k or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know when mid game starts. Um, I've been playing this game for too long. But yeah, uh, the extra range is really nice because you'll have like full 
full coverage hero for us, doing boss rushes, or uh, mini boss rushes, which is really nice. And you'll get some, you'll get experience with that power. The skill power really helps, the aura power really helps, because it also boosts... No, it does not, because it's only support auras. Uh, but the skill power boosts the tags of the experience boost, which is really nice. Um, uh, skill cooldown is really nice to level it as well. So if you're actually going for leveling for a spotter, get skill cooldown first. Um, get the aura powers, uh, get all the power upgrades here. Uh, get your range upgrades. Um, I did get boss gold to max, but for me that's a mistake because I could have invested it in here and get like 5 more levels in here, which is also just 50%. Uh, but yeah, the calculations on the back end are different, but boss gold doesn't do much for me, so. Uh, same for this range. I think I only need. Um, if you have this maxed and you have two levels in here, I believe, then you. Then your Naga from here reaches your DPS tower here, which will boost it, and you'll go, you'll get like more waves done as well. So that's that's really nice as well. This to level two. I don't know why I did the extra ones. It was probably just testing some stuff. Um, perk power is also nice. Pep gold is really really nice. Oh, well, let me show you why it's nice. Uh, let's go forest fighter in here. Look at my Naga getting like 3 million gold, my pet gives 4.5 million gold. I mean, imagine that on my gold farm. That's... Pet gold? Ooh. Pet gold is golden. Like, for real, that's that's probably your best pet. Um, yeah, so if I would upgrade uh, Forest Water again, I would go for a skill cooldown because it increases the faster we level him, the first father, go for the powers, uh, pet gold, perk power is also nice, You, I think you might also need like a bit of perk power, because perk power uh, increases um, the yellow text here for uh, the supports, which for trend and for anti there is our um, base skill power, which is really nice. Um, and then the two combat guys, Goblin King, um, he has some experience, some damage. Um, if you're going to increase your prestige point runs, you're definitely gonna have to get this perk here. I specced out of it because I was pushing and I didn't need the prestige points. Um, yeah, I don't know what I did here, it was kind of a mess, I didn't really know what to go for because I haven't tested it too much because my Goblin King is like low level. Um, but yeah, from what I've noticed, the enemy HP is really nice. If you start your wave with Goblin King on the map, your enemies will have 20% less HP, which is really nice for pushing. Cannot express this, but like, it's really nice. Um, the Weaken is also nice from Ice Mage when he weakens uh, bosses and enemies, and Darkness Dragon will just hit it more often. Enemy speed, also really nice, uh, but I felt like I didn't need it, like it was going rather slow than, like, it was slow enough already, but I will eventually get it of course. It's probably my next investment. Uh, combat power, because death awaits is nice, uh, the lethargy is also nice, let me just get to this, and then Even more. Um, so yeah, Goblin King, invest in prestige points here first, uh, if you're doing a prestige points run. When you're done uh, investing in prestige points, respec out of it, go for enemy HP, go for enemy speed, go for combat power and weaken. Those are probably the main things I would go for. I haven't tried out the poison splash and the stun splash here yet, uh, but I mean, I can only guess they're amazing. Like. Scorpion combat pla uh, poison splash could be very nice. Perk power is also nice because uh, it re increases the spell cooldown uh, from 20% to 25%. Um, prestige gold is not something I would get because that's like 
very bad. Uh, prestige damage. I'll probably get this. Yeah, if I level up go blinking a bit more, I'll get points into damage and prestige damage here. Evo damage, I'll, I'll just leave this blank to like one star because like it increases the um, debuff tower only damage. So I wouldn't go for that. Uh, but yeah, enemy HP is really nice, combat power, weaken, and enemy speed. Then, uh, the Dragon Predator. Alright, this one is really interesting. Depending on your playstyle, let me just quickly not lose efficiency, always. So, uh, damage to 250% here, that's a must have. I went for 10 points in this one as well, it's also a must have. Card damage, if you have a lot of cards like me, then definitely buff power. Uh, I mean, that's amazing. Evo damage, I got that one as well. Not sure if it's worth getting 10 points in it, to be honest, compared to something else first. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I was just testing it out. Um, per chance, not something. I mean, it's nice, but you always get one, and I mean, it's a bit RNG, but. I don't feel like it's needed for now. I mean, it's it's a lesser priority. Perk power, really nice. Should have invested in it way more because um, I'm doing double DPS, which increases the percentage for Hades, double Hades. Um, boss damage all the way up to nine because at nine you have to invest ten points, and when you have as ten points, you can rather do damage up till like twenty four. So I'll keep this at level 9 until this is level 25 and then I'll actually upgrade it. Because this is all damage and this is just boss damage. Um, that's super crit. That's a very good one. Um, I feel like super crit is not worth it unless you have 10 points in it. Because the 10% is a lot compared to the 1%. Um, I'm definitely going to get it compared to some other stuff like buff cooldown or splash damage um, I'm not feeling the splash damage at all like mm, nope not not my thing it's not for me like in my playstyle doesn't mean that it's good for your playstyle it's something that you have to experience and just for yourself uh, attack speed useless because you already have max attack speed uh, skill power is actually pretty nice because it increases like your nuke and your pure shot and all that kind of stuff. Um, buff cooldown, I wouldn't personally get because I only use my buff spells. Like I try to, they get off cooldown anyway when I want to use them. So for me, it's it's a no go for at the moment. I mean, eventually I'll get it, but like I feel like I'm. I have better things to invest in. So, Dragon Predator. If I would have to choose on how to level it, definitely get like 10 points in here. Maybe start out with 5, start out with 5 here. Uh, go for buff power and 5. Uh, Evo damage 5. Cards uh, damage 5. And that's it. And then you start leveling those up. When those are like leveled up, I would go for boss damage probably. Um, and then some 5 levels in crit damage and critical hit chance and then start leveling them up efficiency let's go that's probably how I would level it uh, after I got uh, crit chance and critical damage maxed I will probably go for either skill power or super crit or I might do both at the same time that's probably my best bet together with crit power Double ADs is nice. Um, so yeah, that's my journey on commanders. That's my thoughts about commanders. Um, I'm not saying this is the truth and the holy whatever about commanders, but it's a good choice. It's a good way of leveling them. Um, you still have to see how you're going to do it because it's tailored to me, basically how I play um, so yeah 
Hope you guys enjoyed these insights. Hope you guys liked it. And see you guys next time. Goodbye and thanks for watching.